everyone, welcome to Glass Onion on John Lennon, episode 99.5. I was considering calling it 99.5, but frankly I can't concern myself with that at the moment. This is going to be an unedited episode, raw, organic. I thought it was in bad taste to even attempt to edit this and to give it the usual slick, smooth and wonderfully presented audio. I'm sure by now you've all heard the news, the sad news, the more than sad really, news of the death of Paul McCartney, Sir Paul McCartney, Sir James Paul McCartney, or to give him his full title, Sir James Paul McCartney, Eastman Mills Chevelle. Of course, some, including Queen Elizabeth II, simply knew him as Macca. With me today is multiple former guest of Glass Onion, friend of the show, future guest of Glass Onion, and now present guest of Glass Onion, more importantly, a friend, Scott Phipps. Scott, I hope you're doing okay. I mean, this is a terrible time for all of us. How are you bearing up, mate? I heard the news from you this morning, you know, the early hours, and instantly went to social media to to verify. Not that I didn't believe you, but, you know, just to try and get some sort of realisation of what was going on. And it hasn't sunk in. It really hasn't at the moment. (sighs) Gutted. That's the only word I can I can use at the moment. Absolutely gutted, mate. Um, yeah. The details are a bit sketchy as to what actually happened, and hopefully we may sort of reveal a bit more and find out a bit more as we carry on talking, mate. But the words escape me. It's, it's a sad, sad day. Yeah, it's so difficult, isn't it? I mean, perhaps if people are um, clicking on this episode and they see, I'm, I'm calling it Paul is dead because I'm hoping people aren't thinking that we're going to be talking about this conspiracy theory of you know he died in a car accident or a moped accident in 1966 this this actually happened so i think this is going out on uh, on we're on the monday but it happened in the early hours yeah what yeah well know? okay what we know this is i mean if it wasn't so tragic it would it would almost be funny but again i feel it's, it's in bad taste to even talk about humor at this moment but mm. if people are familiar with um the metal band uh, Spinal Tap, in the f- the documentary they made about their band, they talk about their former drummers dying. And one of them, they said, died of a bizarre gardening accident. And it appears that that's what's happened to Paul McCartney. I mean, it, it's just Strange. awful. I mean, we know yeah. that, you know, we know that gardening instruments, they're used for good, you know, to keep your garden. But we, we know that they're, they're deadly, you know, and... Mm. Lots yeah. of sharp edges and things like that. And what we know is that Paul was having a party on the Saturday night and he, he died about 3 a.m. and was pronounced dead uh, maybe half an hour earlier. Mm-hmm. Half an hour later, sorry. So I'm really... Uh, yeah, no, no, I carry just, on. I just yeah. want to apologise if, if, if I come out very unprofessionally. But it's almost the point, really. I don't, I don't want to just put together a slick product because it's just it's in bad taste, as I keep saying. Yeah. I may as well just tell you, I mean, I've been crying for 24 hours straight. I mean, I really should think about going to sleep at some point. One of the weird byproducts, actually, I've, I've lost half a stone just from weeping. Really? So, oh, my God. I know, but it's again, it just seems in bad taste, you know, to offer up crying as a dietary tip. I mean, it's just not, you know, it wouldn't be a good taste, would it? I mean, Absolutely, mate. No, 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 it's not. Yeah, I mean, I haven't felt this sad since our cat got run over a couple of years ago. And I mean... I mean, the death of an animal is comparable. Not, I mean, not that Paul McCartney was an animal. I mean, he was a human animal, wasn't he, as, as we all are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, animals aren't human animals. They're just, they're animal animals or just animals, aren't they? I'll probably leave that there, to be honest. Drag, isn't it? Scott, how did you hear? Well, you heard the news from me, didn't you? Did you then listen yeah. to the radio? What, what, what did you hear? What, what, what emotions are going? You rang me early hours of the morning and told me, and, and instantly, obviously, you ringing me in the early hours of the morning is something serious because you've never ever done that before. Yeah, yeah. So instantly, I, I I switched on to Capital Gold, you know, to see if I could get the most up to date information because yes. you know generally they are the ones that bring us everything like this that you know that, that they led led the world in their reporting of Bowie's death, you know, and and there wasn't that much information, so stupidly i looked on twitter and there was all this sort of conspiracy stuff going on and nobody actually knew what had happened mm. and, and to be honest i'm still not 100 percent sure myself mate you know the bizarre gardening accident is, is the phrase that is being thrown about constantly on on social media 
but there's no real details as yet. But you said there was a party, and I believe there was some sort of notable guest there, wasn't there? There was, it was a, what would they celebrate? It was an anniversary or something, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, it's it's just all very sketchy. It seems like, I mean, it, from what I've heard, it was a barbecue. So it was an yeah. outdoor party. It was just, you know, it's pretty optimistic, isn't it, for, for late March? Yeah. You know, with the English weather. But, I mean, I, I guess it just sums up. Paul was the optimistic beetle, you know. George was dour. John was cutting. Ringo had a big nose and has now got ludicrously dyed hair and just mm. seems more and more like an octogenarian cartoon character. But Paul, um, yeah, I mean, the guy was an optimist. I mean, that's what one of the things he brought to the world as, as well as the music. But yeah, I mean, uh, what guests do we know? I've got, I've got here Duncan Goodhue, who famously um, yep. won Olympic breaststroke gold medal with no body mm-hmm. hair at all, which obviously yeah. helps, I suppose, for swimming because it makes oh, you lighter. Yeah. 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 Uh, Christopher Lillycrap. I mean, that's a name I haven't heard for a long time. It probably sounds like a They were lifelong friends, they? though, weren't they? You know, they'd, they'd, Christopher Lillycrap kept in the background. But he was, you know, Paul McCartney's friend from the seventies, at least. I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so because I think Paul knew Lily Crap's work from morning TV, and Lily Crap knew Paul from, uh, well, singing. Yeah, Paul used to call it singing and stuff, didn't he? Just that wonderful way he had of being understated and just playing down his genius. But we also had, um, I think, you, didn't you mention Eddie the Eagle Edwards? I, I heard somewhere on Twitter that Eddie the Eagle was there. Yeah, had he ski uh, jumped into the party, maybe? Or was there a, I suppose maybe. there wouldn't be a ramp, though, would there? No, No, but every opportunity to ski for Eddie, you know, he's always there with the goggles, you know. Any opportunity for Eddie the Eagle to appear at a party, especially like a, you know, a big celeb party like this, you know. Yeah, and so, Eddie, any excuse to ski jump as well, as yeah. well as partying. So you put the two together. Cool. Big puffer jacket, you know, all of that. Yeah, um, the ghost of Scylla Black was there doing um, a Laura Laura haunting, apparently. That's a bit of a... a it came from the sun. It's, yeah. You know. Imagine the headlines when we, yeah, when it all comes through. I heard that Patricia Routledge was there, and one of the Chuckle Brothers possibly was invited. Well, there's the last surviving Chuckle Brother. You know. I was going to say because why? Why wouldn't the other one be invited? And, yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, there's only one surviving Chuckle. There brother. is only one. Yeah, but the, is it Barry? I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know their names. I probably should have researched that. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, important um, info. I'm, yeah. I'm giving yeah. myself, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of giving myself a license through to come out to put out a really crap episode of the podcast because you know the other 99, uh, you know, they've been pretty high quality. I don't want to blow my own trumpet or toot my own horn, as they say in America, but mm-hmm. but I, I'm giving myself a license. This, you know, so it's a bit more raw. Oh, it's, it's ha- a genuine reaction, mate, isn't it? You know, to the sad yeah. news. That's I mean, I have nice. used a microphone, which I feel a bit guilty about. But other than that, you know. I'm well, yeah. It's what, he, it's what he would have wanted. Yeah, of course, because he, he knew a lot about uh, microphones, didn't he? He did. Yeah, used a, used a few. Yeah. It's a drag, isn't it? Yeah, so let's go back to uh, what we know. The official line at first was that it was a it was a gardening prank gone wrong doing a somewhat drunken evening that stretched way past the witching hour. So I suppose... Yeah, he did actually die on the Sunday, which is yesterday, as if people mm-hmm. are listening to this as it's come out. He threw in a party at his Sussex home. As I said, it was a barbecue, a bit optimistic. There might have been a little bit of rain down in Sussex, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, did you mention that you'd read something about it, it was something to do with it? It was Scylla Black, because I said the ghost of Scylla Black was there. It was some anniversary about her. It's the anniversary. I think it was the 60th anniversary right. of the day that Scylla Black flew out to America with Brian Epstein. That's what they were celebrating. That's what I heard. Right. Was that flew out in terms of her career, or did she just fly out with Brian Epstein no, to America? No, it was, it it was, was a career uh, thing. Yeah. yeah, it was TWA, I think. Yeah, right. 60 years, eh? it's a long time. I mean, it's six decades, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But actually, I wouldn't go that far. Right, so we know why he was doing the party. We've got some idea of what happened. Uh, there are, you know, inevitably there are conspiracy theories going around. Well, we'll get to that in a sec. But let's just do, um, I mean, how do you sum up a career, especially one like Paul's? But let's do a, a quick overview. So, Scott, who was who was Beatle Paul? Oh, he was my favourite Beatle. I mean, I know you sort of angle towards John Lennon more than McCartney, but... Right. Pete Best is a close second, to be honest, but Paul McCartney has always been top for me. And it's a career of, of highs and lows. Mm. When you consider 
the, the, the Beatles stuff that, you know, why don't we do it in the road is, is up there for me. Um, it's just amazing. I mean, that, that, that song has, you know, it's, it's been lifting people's hearts for nearly 60 years. Yeah. And, and people apparently do start doing it in the road, which I think refers to, I guess it's sexual intercourse, isn't it? I'm assuming so. I'm not so, sure what else. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, what a great song. I mean, Mary Had a Little Lamb. I, d- I didn't actually tell you why, how I heard the news. Um, mm. So it's about three in the morning and I was woken by my dog barking uncontrollably. And, and then it, it sort of went from a, a bark to a howl and then suddenly there was a whimper. It went oh. through its entire range of vocal noises i mean yeah. it didn't you know the dog didn't deliver the news to me directly i mean how how could it i mean how would it express it really but there's something in the barking was telling me to turn on the radio and then i heard mary had a little lamb that's the wings hit rather than the nursery rhyme cool. i just i just knew you know i just sensed something was wrong well you know, you know with the dog howling you must have thought it was actually sort of yoko breaking the news to you at one point you know? yeah i mean it did it did cross my mind well, of course, it crossed my mind that it was some some sick joke, you know, that mm. the dog was in on and Yoko was in on and, and the world was in on. You know, I did I did think for a while, is this some sort of disgusting spoof, you mm. know, that they're putting the news out on the radio and that people are, you know, people are potentially making money out of. That's no, so sick, isn't news. it? Why would, why would you do that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, people just recording these sort of bland tributes just, just so they can get a few clicks. I mean, it's disgusting, really. But, no, you know we're going to get Stuart McConey at some point giving his two penneth worth at, you know, Vox Pops talking heads type thing, you know. It's going to happen. We'll, we'll, we'll get more information and more minor celebs talk, talking about the whole thing today, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm waiting to hear from Christopher Lilly crap later. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's really about the only one I want to hear from, you know. I mean, they'll get Ringo. Yeah. Ringo will come yeah. out and talk about what a great guy Paul was. Yeah. You know, someone might say it's a drag as mm-hmm. you know some sort of strange payback to paul for his you know his bland reaction to john lennon's death but yeah it's a drag isn't it so yeah be- we we're talking about beetle paul and um you know i try and avoid cliches i've spent 99 episodes avoiding cliches but you know paul was a saccharine beetle john was a vinegar that had gone off highly acidic john was a man's man paul was doe-eyed and slightly effeminate until 1965 you know, it was a homely vegetarian meal, while John was minimalist brown rice, raw fish, raw hunger, possibly with a chocolate brownie and ice cream to follow when his self-control suddenly deserted him and he couldn't hold out any longer. I'm, I'm not sure where I'm going with that, frankly. No, no, that sums it up perfectly, mate. Yeah, you know, I think it does. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful bit of uh, dialogue there. Yeah. And I'm quite pleased with it, I must say. Yeah, mm. thanks. Yeah. Um, for Paul's post-Beatles work, I've, I mean, I have jotted down a few notes here. Okay. It was hit, hit and miss. I mean, sometimes literally he had a he had a hit, and we missed the quality of his uh, previous writing. Yeah. If Paul was Native American, you might describe him as you know Apache solo career. If that's not yeah. in poor taste, so that's a little bit uh, bit demeaning <laughs> to Native Americans. You sent me a photo as well of of Paul as an old woman doing charity work in Wales. Do you remember that a couple of years ago? Yeah, it was a really moving photo. Yeah, encouraging people to keep the heating on, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite ironic because I feel like he'd done, I don't know if he's done env- environmental work. I mean, he's a friend of the earth in some ways. I mean, he, you know, veg- vegetarians are magic, really, because they can, they care about animals, but they they can overlook the horrors involved in the productions of egg, production of eggs and fish. Mm. You know, it's, it's quite a delicate skill. Sometimes, you know, we probably should leave the heating on. I mean, we always presume that the heating should be off, but are we doing the human race a service by sitting in our in our flat shivering? I don't know. Exactly. I mean, he's a, he's a great advocate for the elderly. You know, he was, he was you know, the voice of the uh, octogenarians. Yeah, I mean, hard to believe he was 80. What was he, 80? Had he had his birthday this year? He was looking forward to his birthday mm-hmm. again. It's another big tragedy. His, yeah. yeah, his birthday was... Only three months away. There you go. You know, so that would have been the back of his mind. Drag, isn't it? Which songs uh, do you think you'll be remembered by? I've written down just. Well, obviously you've mentioned Mary Had a Little Lamb, you know, yeah, which yeah. stand out for me from Red Rose Speedway Loop, the first Indian on the moon. Incredible stuff. 
quality stuff that really surpasses anything that he wrote with with Lennon. You know, um, we all stand together. How that was not Christmas number one, mm. um, along with Pipes of Peace. You know, because th- th- there's that whole Christmas tradition of Paul McCartney that has become ingrained in most people's traditions now that, mm. y- you know, you, you get the... Um, for me, I know it's a tradition that every Christmas I get the Press to Play album out. First thing that, you know, is I'm putting the Christmas tree up. I have that in the background. Yeah, just thinking of Press to Play, the, there's that song Angry, mm. which is it's just wonderful because it just... I don't know, it just makes me feel angry every time I hear it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Which I think was the point. I don't know... You know, I mean, art, as we know, I mean, when a when an artist creates a piece of art, it, it's up to you to, you know, it's up to us to determine the meaning. I mean, yeah, you interpret it however you see fit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got obvious ones. Hey, hey, Jude, let it be. Just thinking, actually, yesterday, because he actually died yesterday as we were recording this. Wow, didn't even think of that. Again, yeah. just, just one yeah. of those horrible ironies. But I was trying to think, you know, what. I wonder when he, because uh, he famously dreamed that. He never really talked about it. He I didn't know. Heard, just it. unearth one thing when he talked about it. it, it it's a similar sort of thing when he wrote Spies Like Us. Mm. It was exactly the same thing. It came to me in a dream, apparently. Yeah, he just knew he was going to, you know, he composed something that was going to be through the ages, you know. But yeah. Just yeah. wondering if uh, when he when he dreamed yesterday and he was putting it together the next morning, whether he was thinking about something that had happened yesterday. The day before, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. day before, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. But, of course, if it had happened the day before that, then the song might have been called a couple the of days before. ago. Yeah, the day uh, before yesterday. A or couple, ever, yeah, or a couple of days ago. I'm just not sure if we'd be, if we'd be sitting here, you know, what, six decades later, if, if it had been called a couple of days ago. You know, maybe we would, but I mean, it wouldn't really fit the melody. You know, you'd be hard-pressed to get those words in. You know, dun, dun, dun. You've only got three notes to play with. A couple of days get... ago. No, it doesn't work, mate. It doesn't doesn't work. really work, no. no. So you got Shut yesterday. It, it's a better title, I think. It probably is, yeah. In a funny way, it is, I think. The fact of saying like a couple of days rather than two days. It, I don't know, it's sort of... Well, this was the genius of him, wasn't it? And yeah. his lyrics, you know. He, he could do stuff like that. And, yeah, why, why he didn't call it that, why, I really don't know. No, it's hard to know, isn't it? Yeah, yesterday, Helter Skelter, Only Mama Knows. That's another mm. one that people have been yeah. talking about. Because, um, you know, there is a feeling that occasionally some songs are a bit overrated, but yeah, there's the underrated ones as well. Yeah. You know, you've mentioned, what do you mention? Why don't we do it in the road? I mean, Absolutely. just incredible. Just just the whole, ly- the, the lyrical um, ducks and dives that that song takes, you know. It's, it's the standout from possibly their worst album for me. It's, oh, really? It, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Yep. We all stand together. The whole sort of boom, 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 bye. Genius. It, it is. Yeah, you know, you can talk about Beethoven and Mozart and Bach to you, blue in the mm. face. It's always difficult to pronounce it, Bach. You always wonder whether you should say Bach. But then that makes no, you think of a dog. No, go you say with Bach the, or the, Bach? Go with the Schwarzenegger pronunciation, mate, I think. You know, stick with that. All right. So same with Van Gogh, because I actually knew a Dutch person who told me it's Van Gogh. Really? It's just really? so much effort to say that, to keep saying. No, you... Imagine if you're having a conversation when you want to mention his name loads of times, you're just continuously going Van Gogh. Oh, that's it's a, a drag. lot of energy, isn't it? It's a drag, that's yeah. A drag. yeah. I'm, gl- yeah. You know, I'm glad and sorry that you said that, that it was a drag. Mm. Yeah. A drag, isn't it? Doo! Let's go back uh, yeah, to the details of what we know. I mean, there, there was this very sort of grainy smartphone recording of, of the implement actually going into Paul's body. I mean, it, sorry to be so graphic. But yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't quite make it out. But it's there. It's definitely there on the screen for everybody to see. We're obviously going to get more details as, as time goes on. Mm. But yeah, I was, I was shocked. Uh, it really did shock me, that footage. Absolutely. There's been a lot of debate, but I mean, I'm going with garden shears. Yeah, it looked a bit like garden shears. Um, could have been secateurs. They're a little bit smaller. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I mean, you've got some. You already got some idiots online talking about it being a trowel. I mean, how would you kill someone with a trowel? It's I mean, that's just possible. It's possible, you know. And and I read somewhere that those dibbers, as they call them, that you plant mm. seeds with 
was 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 mentioned as well. But we'll we'll find out eventually, mate. I'm sure. I just think from the size of them, again, it wasn't a great video, but I, I'm going with shears and and yeah, this video. I mean, it. Some have actually said that it showed a crazed maniac turning around and attacking Zapul with a blunt instrument. Maybe a blunt pair of shears. I don't know. Maybe they'd been sharpened. Who the hell knows? But yeah. this maniac actually fit the description of former Pete, Beatles drummer Pete Best. Wow. And, um, yeah, I just want to mention something. I don't know if you listen to Glass Onion uh, regularly. You know, yeah. I hope you do. I, yeah. mean, I, I hope you listen every day, Scott. I know, it, you, it's, it's, I know it's you've got a job, my... but... Yeah. No, no, it's one of my turn to is on my commute every morning, mate. Absolutely. Is it? Yeah. yeah. And we've talked recently... I was on a show with uh, David uh, Ghosty Wells, mm. and um, we we're talking about how Pete Best has a, a habit of turning round whenever he's talking to somebody, or sometimes he turns around, sometimes the other person turns round. Mm. So George turned round and said, "But," and they turned round and said, "Can we go and have a look at it?" And uh, they turned round and said, "Well, we can see there's some work." And Mo turned round and said, "Oh, by the way," so John turned round and said, "Well, we." Mo turned around and said to John, and it's not the colour that she's turned around and said. And she turned around and said, what the hell have you done? You know, so he turned around and said, well, you wanted me to paint the seal. So um, she basically turned around and said, you're going to have to do a repaint. So Mo turned around and said, and uh, she turned around and explained to the other three. She turned around and said, no. Ken turned around and said, I'd always promised me. And he turned around and said, fancy starting a, a band, Pete? I basically turned around and said, you want to form a band? And he turned around and said, yeah, they, they agree. I said, there's only one. So uh, he looked at me uh, and he turned around and said, well, and, uh, you know, turned around and said, we're going to start a band. She turned around and said, well, first of all, coerced him and turned around and said, you want to play bass? And uh, he turned around and said, no. And uh, they turned around and said, Alan. So he turned around and said, um, I mean, even when Paul turned around and said, you know, uh, so we turned around and said, uh, so they turned around and, and then we turned around and said, OK. And we turned around and said, where are we staying? So we turned around and said, what about the lights? So John, to his great distaste, right, turned around and said, you know, and he turned around and said, we're the Beatles. The fact that you see in the video he's turning around just before he delivers, you know, the death blow. I mean, one witness has even apparently had Best walking off cackling, saying, I, I'm glad I killed the bastard. You know, I can see the headline in the be. sun. I, know, like, but, I mean, that's a that's a fairly vague statement. I mean, come on, that I'm glad yeah. I killed the bastard. You can interpret that in many ways. I mean, maybe he killed him spiritually. Maybe, maybe he had a go at one of his albums. Absolutely, you know, yeah. There's, there's more ways to to kill a. No, it's not more ways to kill a cat. That's a skin, skin a cat. cat. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think Paul McCartney was skinned, so I probably shouldn't. I don't think he went to that to that level. I'm just picturing the Sun headline tomorrow will be like silly shears. Yeah, it probably is, isn't it? Any other names that we've... I mean, actually, it was one... Uh, Ringo Starr was at the party and was seen uh, with what looked like a blood-stained drumstick. Um, uh, yeah, but then there was some other theory behind that I read, wasn't there, that it wasn't blood? Yeah, that he, he'd been dipping it in ketchup. Uh, I said, yeah. this, you know, this party got a little... It, prob- it sounds like he got a little bit juvenile, to be honest. Mm. You know, probably food fights. and uh, I think Ringo... <laughs> I mean, it wasn't even clear. It wasn't actually made clear whether it was a chicken drumstick or something that you play drums with. Oh, right. Okay. See, yeah, I, it I did cross my it mind. Be. It mm. did cross my mind. Was it a chicken? But then I'm thinking, is, is Ringo a vegetarian? And if you're going to kill... I was going to say, would there be any meat at the party anyway? Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. And if you're going to kill Paul McCartney, I mean, just doing it with a chicken drumstick just seems... I mean, it's just adding... You know, it's rubbing salt mm. in the wounds and salt, vin- salt and vinegar. It's not just into salt. Into a wound, it? yes. Yeah. yeah, it's like putting vinegar into a wound, which is arguably worse. That's a quite painful, actually. Yeah, stings. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's a it's a spiteful act, isn't it? Yeah. Right, we're going to keep this sort of mercifully short. I'm, uh, as everyone knows, I'm sure the other Beatles podcasters will be doing their own tributes. Yeah. Some have actually got Paul McCartney podcasts. So they're probably thinking to themselves, "Am I now out of work?" Then again, mate, you know, the John Lennon thing for you has been yeah. 100 episodes, so... Yeah, well, 99 and a half, but of course. I, I think the 100th one will happen. I've just got to... I feel like I'm not really going to be myself for... I mean, it could be a couple of weeks, it could be six months, so I, mm. I'm not going to be putting pressure. I mean, this is 
this is a major event. I mean, we all remember where we were when JFK was shot, when John Lennon was shot, when Rod Hull fell to his death while fixing his TV aerial oh, during a that, football match. Yeah, gutted. Absolutely gutted on that one as well. That's Yeah, that. I mean... Uh, of course, at the time, people were immediately saying, oh, you know, is Emu going to find another partner or another master? I don't know, it really gets me that some people, they just, you know, a tragic event happens and they're immediately, you know, speculating about what's going to happen. It's in poor taste, mate, to be honest. Well, we, we can sort of speculate with regard to Paul McCartney's kids. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. sure Stanley will have steak for tea tonight for the first time in years. So Maybe, uh, maybe just out of grief. I mean, she might... <laughs> Yeah. She could be a vegetarian, but you know, grief does strange things to people. She might suddenly find herself killing an animal and using its meat for a nice dinner, as you said. Or, or, or creating some sort of clothing from it, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Testing it. Yeah. You know, for makeup purposes and things like that. Who knows? Who knows? Drag, isn't it? Right. Just how will how will Paul uh, be remembered? We mentioned the songs. Anything else you want to bring up here? Carpool with James Corden, absolutely oh, yeah. classic piece of TV in, in the recent years. You know, the Beatles stuff will obviously be remembered, but if you want something from his final years, just turn to Carpool with James Corden, mate. Absolutely superb. Oh, that's really good, mate. That's mm. nice. Yeah, I like to remember Paul with a, a giant spliff in his mouth, writing some nonsense lyrics and being too stoned to apply any filters or quality control to the rhymes. Mm-hmm. That's... Um, I'm just going to quote a couple of lyrics here, mate. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought, I, I'm not going to just go straight for the obvious ones. But just listen. I mean, the, the profundity of these lyrics is, is really quite incredible. So we've got Junior's Farm. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to, you know, these are remarkable lyrics. I, I don't want to, I'm tempted to sort of over-dramatise, but I don't, I don't want to. So, at the Houses of Parliament, everybody's talking about the President. We all chip in for a bag of cement. I took my bag into a grocer's store. The price is higher than the time before. Old man asked me, why is it more? And just one more. Mary had a little lamb, so we know yeah. he, took, he took the well-known nursery rhyme and turned it into something astounding. It followed her to school one day. It was against the rules. Made the children laugh and play to see a lamb at school. I mean, you know, I'm getting goosebumps just reading that, mate. Chills. Chills, yeah. mate. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Right through the spine. Okay, so I've just uh, got a little spiel. Again, I felt like it was... I didn't really want to write things out, but then I thought, if you can do a tribute, it might be worth writing something out, just something to, yeah. for okay. the listeners to take with them. So, first of all, Scott, thanks. Um, no, no. I, I know it I, took a lot for you to come on here today because you know, we're both in... You know, we're both grieving, oh, but I, I needed needed to actually get this out, mate. I think, mm. um, and this is possibly the best way of doing it. I think so. Yeah, you know, mm. it's releasing uh, feelings and yeah, yeah. Once again, it seems like poor taste to talk about glass onion and when episode 100 will finally rear its ugly head. But if anyone would like to send me some money to help them through their grief, then please mm. go ahead. Yeah, you know, I think sometimes sending money to anonymous content creators is it's is a way of dealing with it you know we've all got our ways of dealing with it yeah 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 well, well some said, people yeah. have a drink some people have uh, know, a bag of chips mm. you know whatever money, whatever money works definitely the, the way forward mate yeah. yeah yeah i was gonna say let's raise a glass to paul mccartney but since he's english i'm gonna propose we raise a big fat mug of piping hot tea mm-hmm. And, you know, if you're too grief-stricken to remember how to make tea, we're just going to play you, uh, well, it's the audio of a video of Paul McCartney actually explaining how to make a cup of tea. It's the man himself, the legend of songwriting. So if you've got nothing else to add, mate, do you want me to wrap up? I I don't think I can. I'm still deeply wounded, mate, at the moment. I don't know what I'm feeling. Emotions are running high. Let's just say that. But much missed. God bless. Yeah, so I'm just going to say from Scott, from myself, from Mother Mary, Michelle, Uncle Albert, Admiral Halsey, Jenny Wren and Helen Wheels, good night and God bless you all. Here's that audio of uh, making a cup of tea. All the best, everyone. Hi, my name's Paul 
McCartney, and welcome to Paul McCartney makes a cup of tea. Ooh. Okay, all right. Okay, so what's the first thing we do? Well, we have to have a tea bag. Okay, so we just reach over, get a tea bag, shake it off. You know, because some people like loose tea. I like mine in a bag. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so we put it in the cup, and we get some water, which is just boiled. Okay, so we just get the water and we put it on top of the tea bag. Nice and hot. And then we just get a spoon. Okay, a nice spoon. And just stir it around. And just go, do what you're doing it if you want. It's optional, you know. And then just take that out and get some milk. Some people like black tea, you know. I prefer mine with a bit of milk, you know. So you just get your milk. I mean, just put a drop in, you know, because I like mine strong, really, you know. Okay, and then some sugar. Okay, we got lumps, right, which is one lump for me and one lump for me worms. Okay, all right, so we give that a stir around. That's the one, and we just try it, see what it's like. Okay, it's great, look at that, Peel's mug. That's fantastic, and that's how you make a cup of tea with me, Paul McCartney. Until next time, I'll see you. Be good. Yeah. I'm prepared for death because I don't believe in it. I think it's just getting out of one car and getting into another. Take, Take this, this brother. brother. May, May it serve, serve you well. well.